there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I make briskets at my butcher shop. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, let's make us some smoked beef brisket. All right guys, let's get into the how to smoke a brisket video. Uh, I get uh, asked a lot, a lot of customers come through anyways, not so much on YouTube. There's lots of how to smoke brisket videos on YouTube, uh, but I get asked lots of guys picking up briskets or they had cows done. It's like, I did my brisket. It didn't turn out good, it was tough, or I don't know, I must have did it wrong or whatever. So I'm gonna try and give you guys as simple of a video as I can on how to smoke briskets, how we smoke them for the store, because it's really not that hard, um, and they're really delicious. Briskets aren't really that cheap anymore. This used to be like a, a cut that would give away or grind up, but now that it's caught on, people figured out how to cook them. Um, they're not really that cheap of a cut anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but that being said, it's still worth grabbing one and, and smoking it up if you've got a bunch of friends and family. This is a whole brisket here. You can pick them up at any superstore. Um, and it feeds, this is a big one. Um, it feeds, this is going to feed 20, 25 people. So you have to get a big crew together or eat brisket leftovers for a long time. But uh, when you're picking out a brisket in the store, you want one that's got a little bit of a fat cover here. And uh, I usually... And, I get a double A brisket or triple A brisket uh, for the store. Any less than that, you start losing your intramuscular marbling. So for you Americans, I can't remember if it's choice, prime, or select. I think select's the lowest grade for you guys, so avoid that one. So it's choice or prime is what you want to get. But uh, when he comes from the store, he requires a little trimming up, which if you guys have seen other brisket videos, I'm sure you know how to do it. So this is kind of the top of the brisket here. There's kind of a, a fat ridge that runs along here. You want to take down to a quarter inch. I'm going to take all the fat on the top, in fact, down to a quarter inch. That's your first step. And the next step, there's kind of a heavy fat seam right here. You can see heavy fat seam there. And then there is a, another kind of heavy fat seam on the sides. So this lean bit here you see is called the flat. And where it tapers down to a point is called the point. So see the shape of the brisket, it's wider at the bottom, that's the flat, top is the point. Both of those large pieces of fat are in the point. So let's take a sharp butcher's knife, try not to go too deep. Save this stuff for your sausage making if you guys are hunters. This is nice subcutaneous fat, works good. So I just go with my knife, kind of checking as I go, getting, trying to get down to that quarter inch. Uh, level of fat. Then I flip them over to the other side there. You can see that big ridge. You can almost like push it away and there's kind of a fat seam. So I just push, try and keep that lean meat or not lean meat, brisket meat on and just get that heavy fat out. Kind of cupping, cutting, pulling and there is kind of a seam so it opens up to you a bit. And if there's a little bit of gristle sometimes, like well, this is where the, the brisket would hold on to the animal, the brisket's kind of located right here. So the reason it's so tasty is that it's a locomotion muscle. The animal's using it to pull itself forward all the time. That's why it develops so much intramuscular marbling and there's lots of collagen in there. But collagen is tough. That's the little fibers that wrap around the muscles. The more of those there are, the tougher it's gonna be. But if you can get those to release or break down, the more flavorful it's gonna be. So you can see the fat piling up. There's the sub-Q fat. There's the intramuscular fat, a little bit of gristle. And there's that pocket out of there now. You can see it took about half a pound. Then there's the other side. Do the same thing. Cut into it with the point of your knife. And lean it out. Okay, sometimes there's like at the point end, there's a bit of a flat meat here and I will take that off and kind of cut it flush with the brisket, otherwise it just kind of gets crisp and burnt. But that's basically all there is. A little more here, guys, take her down to a quarter inch to trim it up a brisket. Sometimes, depending on which plant they come from, along the midline I will trim, like that's right here, right along the midline, because uh, they do go through a pasteurization process and it kind of looks brown and off-putting, so I will trim up the midline. So, trimming step is pretty easy to remember, guys. For the most part, you don't have to take that much off, but for the most part, if you're trimming, you just gotta remember three spots 
for the most part, the ridge and the two pockets that gotta come off. Once you got that done, you're done trimming. Now it is ready for your rub to be applied. And I always share my recipes with you guys. So you're not gonna like this. I buy the rub for my briskets. Uh, it's called Saskatchewan Blackening Spice and I get it from JB Sausage Supply in Regina. I'm not being sponsored for this or anything, but it's the best stuff around. Uh, my uncle Joe, who used to own a meat shop, got me onto it. He used to use it back in the day and it's awesome. If you're somewhere down in the States and you can't get your hands on that, obviously, this is a good substitute. It's a great rub ratio. I've used it. It also works awesome. So you're going to get four tablespoons of salt, four tablespoons of black pepper, one tablespoon of granulated garlic, and one tablespoon of onion powder. I call that, and lots of people call that, the all-purpose rub. You can put that on chicken, beef, pork, and it's going to taste good. Briskets are delicious. It's not really about the rub that makes them so delicious. It's about getting some good meat. So you can just put salt and pepper on it and it's going to be awesome. But salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, four, four, one, one. That's the ratio. Then you can add to it from there if you really want cayenne, chipotle powder, whatever you're into, but salt and pepper, the rub is, is not as important as the steps. But when you are applying the rub, you want to get a nice thorough coat on. This is a big piece of meat. There, you know, the middle of this meat is a long ways from the outside. So give it a good shot. Get it into every crevice. Get it onto the sides. It's gonna make a nice crust. Or I think as uh, my American watchers call it, a bark. I think if you're a big barbecue guy in the south, I don't know, I'm not into barbecue contests and stuff, but the, you want a good bark. Okay, I see he's not both sides of the meat. Good heavy rub. Work it into those pockets we cleaned up, into the sides. No flavor. It should be missed anywhere. The sides there. Okay. And now I just pat that down. And before you put your rub on, if it's like really wet from the backpack bag, you can um, you can pat it dry before you put your spices on. Another thing too is I don't like rub it because I find it rubs all those spices off. I like to have that, those, those little bits of spice add kind of a texture layer on the outside. Don't get too hung up on all the steps though. The most important steps come during the cooking time. All right. Oh, I missed some on the front. I missed some. There we go guys. The brisket is seasoned, trimmed, and is now ready for the smokehouse. Some guys uh, ask me, do you let them marinate or brine overnight? No, it's gonna be smoking in the smokehouse for 12 to 16 hours. Um, so this flavor is gonna be all over this piece of beef. You don't need to brine them overnight or for days at a time or anything like that. So trim, season them, and now we're good for the smokehouse. All right guys, so now that we're ready for the smoking step, we've got them rubbed down. Uh, I smoke my briskets at 225 Fahrenheit for 12 hours minimum. I don't really go by temperature, I go for at least 12 hours and I'll show you when they come out. If they're nice and jiggly, they're gonna be nice and super tender. Um, but a little tip for you here, here they are loaded all up, all ready to go. The fat side does go up though, so that when it's smoking, that fat starts to render out, it's gonna drip down over your brisket and just keep it more moist and juicy. It's gonna be like a self basting. So basically it's gonna be 225 for at least 12 hours. Uh, we're going to hit it with hard, heavy hickory smoke for the first four hours. And after that, you're kind of just cooking it. Um, but the biggest thing is, is guys, open them up, open your smokers up and you're looking at them and your friends come over and you want to, hey, like, look at what we're having for supper and you're lifting the lid. Once you close that thing, just be, make sure your smoke pellets are going, make sure your oven's still warm, but don't open that lid. Just be negligent. Just totally ignore them. Forget all about them for 12 hours. Don't close that door, nothing. Heavy smoke, first four, 225 for 12 hours. 
I open my dampers just a little bit, just a little, little excess steam out, and uh, that's it. Don't complicate it. Don't check them. Don't open them up and show them off. Just close it and come check it in 12 hours. So I'm going to come check these guys in 12 hours. I guess if you're, I do mine, I throw them on last thing before I go to bed because these are for the store. So they're ready first thing in the morning. We have brisket buns in the shop on brisket days first thing in the morning. But uh, if you're going to cook for supper time, you want it done at 6 p.m., that means you got to get it on, like on the smoker at, uh, at 6 a.m. And sometimes I smoke them a little bit longer. If they aren't jiggly, I'll smoke them longer. But 225, I'm gonna close the door. And we're not gonna check them. All right, there we go. 12 hours, five minutes to warm up. And I don't know who said it originally, but I seen, seen Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right. He said it, if you're looking, you're not cooking. All right, so 12 hours has gone by. I haven't opened up the smokehouse. I didn't check on it at all. So uh, they should be nice and tender now. First look here. Oof, there you go. Smokehouse full of briskets. Look at those guys, they're all good. And uh, so kind of like the little test that I use is if they, uh, if they jiggle, kind of like jello, they're good, good and tender. Now when you're taking those out, you do got to be a little careful. Uh, if you just lift, try and lift it up right now, it will, it's so kind of tender, it'll split in half. You do need to let them set at this point. So if you're, what I do here is I just put them on racks, pop them in the cooler, because uh, we serve ours uh, backpacked and cold. That's how we, how they're for sale at the store. But if you wanted to serve this to your friends now, I would take this, wrap it in tin foil and a towel and let it set for probably like an hour. So a 13 hour process total trim it, smoke it at that 225 without checking on it. And then you'd want to wrap it and rest, it's what it's called. It's gonna keep those juices inside your, uh, your brisket because they're pretty hot right now. They all got some nice jiggle. Oh yeah, they'd all be good, good and tender. So that's kind of the steps on how to smoke brisket. So I'll let these, one of these guys rest and uh, we'll, we'll dive into them and, and taste them here. But that's kind of the not not as tricky as it is it's uh, made out to be you don't need to open it up and mist it and check it every so often just leave it for 12 hours and guarantee you they'll be good and tender okay so it's the next morning here and we got our beef brisket that we smoked i wouldn't really recommend doing this if you're doing this at home like i said i'd have wrapped it up in tin foil and a towel and put up there in a cooler for 45 minutes to an hour and then sliced and served it to your guests but uh, since we sell these in the store we cool them right down so they're you know firmed up all that fat and juice and flavor is now solidified inside this brisket and we just chunk it up into about five chunks so maybe this one we would do about four so we basically do four person portions but just cut her in half here nice dense texture now that everything's solidified up i'll bring it in here for you guys to see there you go guys, you can see these guys fully cooked, look pretty good, they're obviously better warmed up, served hot right out of the smokehouse, but these guys reheated here still have lots of juice, we still get lots of people coming in picking them up, get that nice smoky flavor, got that nice bark on them there, texture, the spices and stuff, they're still pretty good this way, so. All right there guys, so that's how we smoke beef briskets at the meat shop here for the store and for the restaurants. You guys can follow the similar process and steps on your pellet grills and stuff at home. But uh, this is where the process ends for us here. But for the restaurants, they serve them up nice and hot. So we're going to pop down the hocktail and uh, eat some nice beef brisket buns before the video is done. All right, down here at the brewery, hocktail brewery, we're going to head into the tap room to get some smoked beef brisket on a bun. Okay, let's have a bite. Want a bite? <laughs> Too big. Mmm. That's really good. That's good? Mm-hmm. Smoky and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how's the pickle? It's good. Yeah, he's a pickle fan. That's very good. Yep. Yeah. Oh. My mouth is yeah. full. <laughs> no, no problem. That is delicious. Say it's delicious. Delicious. 
Best brisket ever had. Yeah. All right, guys, so that wraps up the how to smoke a brisket video. A couple people down at Hawktail diving in there, giving it a go. So thanks for clicking on. Appreciate you watching. If you want more, like and subscribe. We'll make you some more videos in the future.